Hey, we're at Cassandra Summit 2014 here in Europe. Chris, welcome. Thank you very much. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us where you work? I'm Christopher, uh, Christopher Redijk uh, in full. I, I work for ING. Uh, it's, a, it's a bank. It's one of the large, it's the largest bank of the Netherlands actually. And uh, I work there as a dev engineer, so developer mainly. More of a back-end guy than a front-end guy. Always we're more interested in the back-end, so the middleware parts of, uh, of the application landscape, to say it like that. So uh, that's also where my love to Cassandra comes into play. Uh, we were investigating Cassandra within ING. Also where I met Gary, uh, or actually where we worked intensively together. Mm -hmm. So we could relate on the, on the back-end part there. So we're working for four years for ING now. So wow. that's, uh, that's a pretty long time. That's a pretty long time, sure. Yeah. Working for the bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know where all the money is. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit about your use case. So, you know, so what, are, what are you guys evaluating Cassandra for? What do you, uh, what do you look at Cassandra for its, what it does? What can it, what, how can it help ING? Yeah, well, we have, uh, we have three main challenges we see within, I, uh, within ING or within any bank, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. we, we need to be uh, highly available to our customers, so customers should always have access to their data. Sure. Uh, we need to be easy scalable, mm -hmm. so we need to improve that part as well. And we need to be consistent in certain parts. If we actually communicate data back to our customers, it has to be consistent at the least. So we want to be and available and consistent. So that's uh, a hard combination of the two. Uh, so that, that's actually our biggest challenge that we see at ING at this moment. So if you look at Cassandra, where does it come to play? Uh, especially to the parts where we are communicating out to our customers. Uh, we are working on multiple uh, use cases at this moment. One of them is uh, where consistency is really important. So that's also where our uh, presentation was all about. And um, the other one is for caching. So we caching. want to cache the data which we have in our backend systems at this moment. Because they can no longer actually uh, handle the load which is on there. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the TPS of it so that the, the transaction per second should be going down on the, on, the, on the mainframes so that we can move that to the, to the Cassandra layer on top of it. Mainframe? Mainframe, yes, yes we have it. <laughs> mainframes have it still. Yeah. Um, so it's, I, you know, having worked with you guys before, you know, another one of the, use, or one of the other uh, features you were looking at was the multi-data center. Oh yeah, and so uh, it seems like for a financial institution that makes sense, right? You can hold up to disaster, but consistency is the challenge that you're trying yeah. to get. So, can you talk a little bit about consistency from the viewpoint of a financial uh, institution? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will try to uh, to explain it as good as possible, and else Gary can fill me in later on. But uh, what we see, especially with multiple data centers, is uh, we have two data centers at this moment. So even then, uh, consistency is getting harder because it, you still mm -hmm. have that single point of failure in between those two data centers, right? So it could be that you have split brain uh, and we are actually solving that now with, uh, right. with, with three data centers. Uh, right. It's the easy solution. We also have something called DC, uh, DC stickiness, so data center stickiness. We stick our transactions uh, or any other orders to, to, the, to, the, to the data centers. And uh, why do we need uh, two data centers? We already have them, but it's now uh, on an active passive setup and we want to go to an active active setup. So we are always on and that's the key word here. We, w we need to be always on for customers, but in a consistent way. So we have to make sure that, uh, that we are uh, consistent across the data centers. So we are using Quorum uh, for our reads and writes in the parts where we really need consistency uh, for our applications. Uh, and, and would you say this is a solvable problem? Because I. I, I hear this a lot, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, a harder problem is is making sure that you're well replicated, right? That's a hard problem with mm -hmm. a lot of databases. So because Cassandra just does that so well, um, do you think that the consistency is a solvable problem at ING? Uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. It, it does need some uh, some uh, application or client side attention as well to 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 complete it, I guess. But Cassandra out of the box is actually helping helping us a lot, especially with the replication factor. It's replicating like split seconds or milliseconds, of course, in that sense. Uh, and we really see that, uh, that, that Cassandra, out of the box, with its active, active data, uh, data center support, also with, uh, with the replication factor and the consistency level, the tunable consistency, is really helping us in, uh, in gaining momentum, in uh, improving that we can achieve consistency with, uh, with a product like Cassandra. So yeah, definitely. So if, if you were to talk to somebody today, and there's, you know, just looking at Cassandra for the first time, well, what would be your advice for them, you know, and if they're gonna look at it, what would you give them advice to do? 
Yeah, uh, it, it's actually the luxury we had, I would give that as an advice. It's just pick up the product, try working with it, and walk into any wall you can ever imagine. Uh, and take the time to, to get acquainted with the product. That's the best advice I can give, I guess. Because what we have seen, we, we got the opportunity from our management to actually experiment with a product mm -hmm. like Cassandra, which is new, also with resilience testing and, and going nuts. So complete control over our hardware and software uh, actually gave us the, the biggest advantage in learning the product. So uh, if you're starting with Cassandra, which is a paradigm shift, give your developers full flexibility and uh, help on everything they need and, and let them walk in walls because that's when you learn the most actually. You do so. learn a lot from failure. Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts sometimes, but uh, it's really worth the effort uh, yeah. indeed, yeah. Well, that's engineering, right? Yeah. We break that's things, it. we put them back together. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's engineering culture, so that's the cool thing. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming down and talking to me today. Oh, thank you very much too.